Hello everyone, I'm David with Final Touch Auto Detailing and today on In The Garage we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of small items that you can pick up. I think the most expensive one we're going to talk about for the most part is still right at $60. So everything that we're going to show you today is $60 or less except for one item which does carry a little bit more cost but we'll talk about that later. Starting off we're going to talk about brushes, tools, PPE, towels, lights, and steps. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is brushes that I use inside of a vehicle. And I think everybody should have some, several different options of brushes from the difference in how long the bristles are and how hard the bristles are. That makes a difference in how rough it is on either carpet, seats, plastic trim. Just depends on what you're trying to clean and what your goal is to. So you gotta always start off with the least aggressive method first. That kind of holds true and, and anything you're doing on the interior or exterior, don't wanna just go in it with the most rough thing that you could possibly use to start with. So this is a brush I've had for like a lot of years. It's a fairly soft brush. The bristles aren't really long and you can probably see some hair and such in there. This is something that's great for, first off, if you've got some type of dirt in carpet or, or seats, you want to brush on it and try to loosen up as much of that dirt without getting it wet. I've seen some folks that will just kind of go into it with some sort of moisture, whether it's a cleaner or water or what have you. Me personally, I find out that using, you know, just a brush to loosen dirt up can help it be really easy to vacuum out. And for something that's flat and kind of big, you know, this is great, like I said, for seats or carpet, depending on the uh, stiffness of the carpet. All right, so another type of brush that we can use is something that's skinny and got some stiff bristles. This is something that works great for being able to reach places I can't really get to with my bare hands. Mostly like between the seat and the center console or the seat and the door. Sometimes those areas can be rough to reach into with a vacuum cleaner, but being able to scrub some stuff up and get it loose certainly helps. These are brushes that I mainly keep dry. I don't think I ever really use these wet with anything, maybe a little bit of a degreaser or all-purpose cleaner type thing. Great for some areas under the hood if you're doing an engine bay detail. So this is something that's got a pretty stiff bristle and it's, it's big. Other brushes. Everybody brushes their teeth, I'm assuming. So you can use an old toothbrush to get into things that those bigger brushes over there can't. These are also great for cup holders. A few other little spots there on the dash or what have you that can, uh, you know, you got a little piece of dirt or dust that you just can't wipe out with a microfiber towel. And it's good for having something to scrub out. There again, you use it the first time when you're brushing your teeth. When it gets old and you're ready to toss it, throw it in your detailing arsenal. Otherwise, a, a toothbrush like this or a brush that looks similar to a toothbrush. Uh, I'm thinking you can get a pack of these that has a, the nylon bristles. It's got a brass bristle brush and a wire bristle brush that's you know different levels of stiffness but you can pick these up for like less than five bucks for the three pack some other brushes uh, obviously i like libman they're again they're made in the usa so that's pretty important to me this brush obviously has short stiff bristles this is great for carpet i try not to use this on seats i don't want to pick the fibers because they're usually a little bit more delicate in seats but you don't have to be rough on it and this has some shorter, stiffer bristles, and you can be pretty rough on some things like the uh, the kick seal or whatever whenever you're stepping into the car in the door seal, that, that plastic trim usually catches a lot of dirt and something like this, you can be a little bit rough with it and you're not gonna damage the plastic. And depending on what type of car you're in, some other nicer cars like uh, some Mercedes and Audis, I've seen the, the that plate down there is a little more decorative, so you might not want to use something quite as stiff. Another thing I love for cup holders being the fact that it's it's round and can get down into a cup holder. This is really great brush for that. Uh, it's pretty soft, so you know, it's not like you're going to do a lot of damage, so just be careful about what you're using it on. Moving on to some outside brushes that I use quite frequently. Uh, back to the Libman. This has got a pretty ergonomic design for its handle especially if you're right-handed. I'm left-handed, but I can use both hands for the most part. This is great for tires. Uh, if you got a, a tall tire, big four-wheel four drive truck or something, 
keep it straight on like that. If you got some low profile tires on something, you can kind of hit it at the side like, like so. Real easy to use brush. And there again, it's stiff enough for tires without being too rough on anything. This is a brush, it's got long, thin bristles. I can't even remember where I got this from. I've had it for many, many years. It's soft enough to be used on like plastic trim on the outside of vehicles. I've used it on that before. Also use this on tires. I'm thinking for the most part, if you, if you need something with a little bit of aggressiveness to it, this would be great for, like I said, tires or plastic trim on, on vehicles. You're not gonna be too rough with something like this and tear it up as long as you're easy. Here's some other great brushes. These are called Wheel Woolies. And for getting into the barrel portion of a wheel, these are absolutely fantastic. It's made of something pretty soft. I'm guessing this is probably nylon. You can get into the barrel portion of the wheels with this fairly easy on most wheels. And of course having different sizes makes it a little bit more able to, if you're trying to get between a brake caliper and the barrel portion of the wheel, and it's just a tidal area. With this, you can get into lug nut areas and the rim portion of the wheel. Those areas collect a lot of brake dust, so these brushes, pretty awesome. On to a couple other brushes. Some people will cringe at the thought of this. It's a magic eraser, whatever generic brand name you want to throw out at it too. There's, there's probably some good uses for this. I've used it. It's like using 3000 grit sandpaper approximately. It's, it's abrasive. And if you're using it on some things, you can be too rough with it and you can tear some things up. So with anything, you want to start off with the least aggressive method first, as we've always talked about. But knowing what you're doing with it is probably more key than anything. Obviously, you want to use these when they're wet. You dip them in water, wring them out, and then some plastic trim pieces, I would say this is very safe to use. And on leather seats, I know a lot of people use this. It's abrasive and you're going to rub off the coating on the leather seat. So I'd be very cautious if I was using this on that. I'm not going to use it on that because I know if you tear something up, it's going to be costly to fix. So just go at things with an open mind about what you're using the product for or on, I guess you could say, and make sure you're being smart about it. There again, don't forget it's like 3000 grit sandpaper. This is a bug sponge, I think is how it's kind of labeled. These things are cheap as hell. You can grab you a bunch of these, get you some that are like one color from the interior and then some that are a different color that you're gonna use on the exterior or whatever to keep them uh, separated. But this, having this little bit of a net on wrapped around a sponge, this, this is great for being able to be a little bit rough without being like too much. I mean, something like this has a little bit of roughness to it, probably a lot less roughness than the magic eraser using this on some seats uh, center consoles pretty much anything you could use this one and it's, it's soft enough to to work and aggressive enough to be gentle so if that makes any sense so i love these on the inside as much as i do on the outside so being able to scrub bugs and stuff off and as long as they have it etched into the paint you know it's not too bad of an idea moving on to something else this is actually a tool for using to squeegee out water out from under like window film and all it is is a, a hefty rubber squeegee this is great on large portions of carpet where you kind of squeegee the dirt pet hair or some some things it's just you got to have an arsenal of tools not everything is going to work on every single situation so you got to be able to have something you can switch out this type of squeegee is really good as well on the interior of car if you got a lot of pet hair Having some cheap tools like this could be a big, big plus in your arsenal. Lily brushes and pet hair stones. A pet hair stone is very similar to a pumice stone. This is made of recycled plastic and it's a little rough. It's abrasive for sure. The lily brush is very soft. It's a, basically it's a squeegee about like this, only except the lily brush is softer. They basically perform the same job. It's a very similar process. The pet hair stone, rub it on carpet, rub it on seats, depending on the seats. Don't want to do this on leather and you're probably not going to have pet hair stuck in leather, but you know, use your brain. Rubbing this on uh, fabric seats. Sometimes the sides of seats are made of a little bit different fabric. Pet hair gets in a car, it goes everywhere. 
But a little bit more general option is the Lily Brush. And while I've tried both of these out, I do like them both. They have their place and uh, they're, they're both gonna get a lot of use, especially if you're using tools that are very basic, just basic hand tools. All right, moving on to the next thing. Tools, some basic tools you can have that can mean a heck of a difference for you is some personal protective equipment. You only get one set of eyes, you only get one set of hands. If you don't have either one of those or you start losing some abilities in them, that could really wreck your game. So, start with safety glasses. You can get several different styles of safety glasses. They're not expensive. These things are like two, three bucks a piece. Maybe you can get them less if you buy them in bulk, but something flies up in your eye, it takes a lot less time to put on a set of safety glasses than it does to go find out what's in your eye and getting that taken care of. And if you go to the emergency room, $2 for a pair of glasses is a heck of a lot cheaper than a trip to the emergency room. Plus whatever time you lost from doing your job if you didn't lose that, that customer because you had to stop. Hopefully more people are understanding of that, but you know what's really easy to understand is just buying a pair of safety glasses. Get your eyes protected. You don't want nothing in them. If you're using a vacuum cleaner, that thing is making noise. If it's close to you, you're gonna hear that noise. And over time, all that noise does is damage your hearing. I've heard a lot of people say, oh, I, don't, I just blocked the noise out because I listen to headphones. If you're cranking music up with headphones or earbuds, whatever, jammed into your ears, all you're doing is adding to the problem. Protect your hearing. You can buy a huge box of earplugs, something like this. Roll those things up, shove them in your ears. They're disposable. Like a big box of earplugs is like 10 bucks. Something else is pretty cheap for protecting your hearing. Some earmuffs. These earmuffs are actually a little better than these other earmuffs. I think these earmuffs are like 20, 25 bucks. These are like $15. Find you some earmuffs that are comfortable. Try them on, see what you like. Keep them clean and protected. If you notice the seals around them are cracking, that's gonna let sound in that you don't need to just have blasting in your ears, making you go deaf. Get you some earmuffs. Less than 30 bucks, you can get you a nice pair. All right, protecting your hands year round. You can buy gloves of all kinds. There's a million types of gloves. I'm sure there are. Here's a couple of them. These are neoprene gloves. They are fleece lined. They're waterproof. It's what you would wear if you were kayaking, you're in cold water environments. Don't want water getting on your skin when it's cold. If it's winter time and you're washing outside, get you some of these. My hands actually sweat when I wear these too long. So you might go for the option that don't have fleece lining. Uh, these are called Glacier Gloves. That's a brand name. There's a few other gloves out there. Just go search neoprene waterproof gloves. You're going to find something. Scuba diving, kayaking, any type of outdoor activity. And I think I paid uh, $22 for these roughly. I'm thinking they were like $25, but somebody bought them, tried them on, said they're too, too small or too big, whatever. They sent them back. I got like an open box deal for like three or four bucks off. Great, great investment. Other types of waterproof gloves. These are just heavy duty rubber gloves that you can get from Walmart, Home Depot, Amazon, wherever you want to order them from. Get you some gloves that will not only keep product off your skin, but keep your hands warm. If, if it wasn't too cold, but I wanted some thick, heavy gloves, buy these. Heck, go buy some dishwashing gloves. Nitrile gloves, this box of nitrile gloves. This is nine mil thickness. This, these are the thickest gloves uh, like this you can buy as far as disposable gloves. If you want to get those two, three, five mil thickness, whatever they are, go for those. They come in a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different thicknesses. So you can get a box of 50 of these. These are pretty much so thick and durable that I only buy one or two boxes a year because for the most part, I can just wash these off and they're good to go again. I, I use this like many, many times. So get you some of these thick, heavy duty Nitrile gloves, if that's what you want, or if you want the real thin basic ones. If you live in an area that's really hot, your hands are probably gonna sweat if you, a lot if you're wearing thick gloves, so you may wanna go with the thinner ones. All right, so you're not working in water right now, you're doing some other type of job, maybe you're just running a vacuum and you're not gonna be running the risk of getting your hands wet. You may wanna go with some of these gloves. These have got thick leather padding on it, they got some rubber stuff on the back, maybe you think they look super cool. Uh, if you're, using a vacuum cleaner and you're kind of jamming your hand up under a car seat and they've got the little metal brackets on it that you know that's how they slide back and forth the 10 seconds it takes to put on a pair of gloves and protect your hands uh, versus the time it would cost you and probably a little bit of pain if you ran your hand under a seat to pick something up and 
Maybe there's a sharp object under there that you had no idea was there and it jammed you and went under your fingernail. That hurts. That's pretty painful. Or if you tear a knuckle on a part of the seat frame, that's going to be painful as well. You're going to stop. You're going to probably cuss a little bit about it because it hurts and you're going to be in pain and then you're going to have to finish that job in pain. If you can protect the knuckle from getting busted, put some gloves on. These are like 10 or 12 bucks and you know, go to Walmart, wherever that sells work gloves and find you a pair that's nice. Go spend five extra dollars for the nicer pair if that's what uh, you think will, will make you better. But yeah, protecting your knuckles, protecting your fingers. These are the tools you need to protect these tools. All right, some other tools to use. These are all very, very basic tools and you can get a lot done with these. Sometimes being able to reach into an area that you can't with your fingers. If you're somebody that's not using compressed air to help blow dust and debris, little chunks of stuff out of cracks and crevices, these, uh, they may call them forceps or tongs or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. They're, they're long tweezers to me. And you can pick these up. I think these were about eight or nine dollars. I don't remember where I got them, but look for long tweezers. Just Google search long tweezers. I'm sure you'll find some of these for, heck, maybe they're 10 or 12 dollars at this point. But being able to reach down into a crack somewhere and be able to pull something out with these, that's very valuable. Here's a pair of tweezers. I can't remember where they came from. You can probably find these in a beauty section somewhere because it's they're, they've got really thin pointed tips be great for if you've got to dig something out and you just can't get it with anything else this may be the the right tool for you you can pick these up at cvs in like the beauty area uh, women use this to pluck their eyebrows and stuff because they're really pointy and very precise you know probably five or six dollars also in that section you can find q-tips so the the cotton swabs or q-tips that a lot of people are most familiar with they have just a ball of cotton on the end I'll get you a close-up of this because it's probably hard to see from there. This is also something that's in the beauty section of CVS, Walmart, places like that, Walgreens. And this is a cotton swab that has a little bit different tips. These things are great for being able to get into dash vents, anywhere there's a little crack that you can't quite brush some things out. These are great and I'm, I'm thinking you get like a hundred of them for like two or three bucks. That may be a little bit pricey for what you're getting compared to a regular box of Q-tips for like 500 or 1,000, whatever's in there for the same two or $3. But the fact that these have a nice little flat end and then a pointy end, getting in vents, if you're somebody that goes to the extent of cleaning out vents in a car, this would be very beneficial to you. Something else you can pick up at pretty much any place where you can find a toothbrush. This is a little tool that if you've ever been to a dentist, they probably scrape your teeth. I think it's called a scaler. For like six bucks, you can buy these and they come with like a tiny little mirror. You may or may not use the mirror in your detailing, but this little tool right here, this has saved me a lot of time. And one of the things that I find that this little tool is great for, people get little rocks stuck in the tread of their shoes. And then when they hop in the car and they push their foot on the gas pedal or the brake pedal, those usually have tread also and rocks get stuck from your shoe into the brake pedal or the gas pedal. Having something that's metal and hard that you can scrape and pick that out, lifesaver. But as far as this being a great little tool for being able to pick things out of cracks, heck, you, if you come up with any other ideas for that, let me know because these are great. If you don't get one of those, these are the little things that you find in the toothbrush section that says Colgate on it. And as far as being a soft little brush, I mean, this is one of those things that uh, it's like brush on the go. You throw these in your car or something like that. If you've got to brush your teeth, you can at least clean your teeth up a little bit, but these are really soft bristled there. They have like a little toothpick thing on it that's plastic. It's soft. You can pick things out of cracks with that. Brush things out of tight little areas. I mean, I don't know what you pay for these. I'm sure they're not that expensive. You get a pack of probably 20 or 50 or something for under 10 bucks. Great tool to have. All right, razor blades. You can use razor blades for a variety of things. I would recommend if you're gonna use an actual metal razor blade, it probably should be on glass and you still should be very careful. One, you don't wanna cut yourself if you slip. Two, you don't wanna damage the car. One thing that I use a metal razor for is usually basically shaving junk off of glass. There's stuff that gets stuck to glass and just rubbing a towel on it that's wet. Doesn't always cut it. I uh, use clay on glass as well to try to get glass clean. 
sometimes it's there's stuff stuck on glass that's just really rough. Best thing I can find is to quickly spray some glass cleaner on it, provide some lubrication, and then you can just gently scrape on the glass and get stuff cleaned off. Sometimes people put stickers on glass. This is one of the greatest ways to get glass, get that sticker residue scraped off of glass. Also, you can buy plastic razor blades. It's the same shape and all as a regular metal razor blade. It doesn't quite have the sharp edge to it, but it is something that's firm enough that you can scrape with without being dangerous. If you needed to scrape on the inside of something that was plastic, you could safely scrape with a plastic razor blade, not cause any damage. I think a pack of 100 of these was like $3.99 or something. They're again, very, very cheap. These are tools that I think came with a window tinting tool kit. Uh, they're both really thin. This has a little bit more uh, rigid stiffness there right in the middle. Both of these are great for not only being able to scrape something, a lot of times I've used these, I'll wrap a microfiber towel around, around it, hold it tight, and it's, it's good for getting in cracks of things. Also, if you have something that you need to scrape off of the other plastic, sometimes paint just depends on what it is, and there again, you gotta be very careful. You can use these very easily to help scrape up and loosen some things that maybe, you can use these very easily to be able to scrape some stuff off that could be stuck to a surface or down in a crack. One of the things I use this a lot for is I'll wrap a towel around it and then I'll go along the edge of a rubber gasket in the door seal and be able to clean some of that junk out. Very, very helpful. Here, kind of the same thing. This is something that came in a window tinting toolkit. Now it's called the Little Chiseler. This is made in the USA. It's great. You can buy these uh, online for like a dollar. I think I found these on Amazon for like a dollar. They, they have kind of a, a long curve, short tight curve, another long curve, and just it's thicker in the middle so that you have something that's not gonna flex so hard, but it's also kind of sharp. It's not so sharp that it's gonna cut you, but it's sharp enough to be thin to be able to get down in a crack of some kind. Very good tool using the same kind of principle. This is something also made in the USA. Found this at Walmart in the cooking stuff section where there's a, uh, pots and pans and spoons and all that kind of stuff for serving food. This is a, basically just a piece of plastic. It's hard back here on the edge. The purpose that this was being sold for in the store was if you've got caked on stuff in pots and pans, scraping it out. When I saw that, I was like, hey, I think of a couple ideas I could use that for. 99 cents. Uh, I ended up buying like six or eight of them because you can never have too many of those things and they quit selling them or something. Anyway, this is great for scraping stuff out of pretty much anywhere. Uh, as long as it fits, it's got the curved edge, it's got kind of the more pointy edge. There again, wrap a microfiber towel around it, scrape and clean things out. Uh, an old butter knife or table knife, whatever you might call this. I don't even know where it came from. If I'd stolen it from my wife's uh, utensils, I wouldn't be alive to make this video. But there again, it's something cheap. Maybe you find some uh, butter knife, table knife at a yard sale or something like that, this is invaluable. I mean, sometimes you might need to do what a lot of people do, use it for a screwdriver, but having something like this that's long and pointy, you never know where you're gonna to need to reach in and scrape on something uh, to be able to knock something loose or clean something out. And also something, if you need a, a long pointed end, wrap a microfiber towel around it, clean it out. All right, other tools. A lot of things inside of cars snap together anymore. It's like cars are almost made of Legos, but you're not getting a brand new car every time. Sometimes you're cleaning cars that are 10 years old, 20 years old. Heck, you might have somebody bringing you a 50 year old car that's absolutely their baby and they want the best they can care of it and you're the guy for them. I think like five or six bucks, you can go to somewhere like O'Reilly's, Napa, Pet Boys, whatever is available in your area and pick up a set of metric and standard hex keys or Allen wrenches, whatever you call these. Six or eight bucks, man. Uh, you never know what you're gonna need to unscrew or maybe come across something that's loose. 
you notice it's loose, your customer knows, knows that it's loose, but they don't necessarily tell you. You find it, you tighten that up for them, you'll be like, oh, hey, yeah, I found that that thing was loose. I tightened it up for you. They're like, wow, this guy really does go the extra mile. I'm pretty sure these came from Harbor Freight. There was a set of these that's, uh, I had a set similar to this, metric and standard. And these are Torx bits. Uh, what do we got here? All the way up to 40. 30, 27, um, nine all the way up to 25 on this side. If you wanna buy something like this, or you can buy some individually, or you can even buy a set of the screwdriver style. There again, a lot of things take Torx bits to loosen or tighten. Maybe you need to take something off. Maybe you need to tighten it up. Six or eight dollars, you have those tools available and you're gonna use them. You're gonna make somebody's day when they know that you took the extra time to do something like that. This I'm digging, this is something I got, it's uh, brand new for me. When I talk about being able to get in somewhere, sometimes it's easy to take things out, like a lot of new cars, I said, they snap together, it's like Legos. Uh, I'll show you a few of these things, we won't get into it, I think there's like 40 something pieces in this set, but maybe you're the guy who's got a car that was in a garage and there was a house fire, the garage was pretty safe, but there's a lot of smoke damage inside their garage and then their car. Maybe you're the person that's taking a car almost completely apart. You've taken apart, you've taken seats out, you're popping carpet out, the trim pieces along the doors, maybe even the door panels. There is a tool in here for every single one of those applications. I'm almost 100% positive. The Here's just something randomly I pulled out of here. If maybe there's something around a gear shift, a uh, trim piece, you pop underneath there and gently pry it up and go all the way around. There's a lot of cup holders that I come across where essentially once the cup holder itself is snapped down into like the center console, it'll come out. It takes some gentle persuasion, but having a couple of prying tools, there again, they're, they're also similar. They're different, but similar. Um, Here's something, maybe you need a pointy end to kind of poke underneath something and, and pull something out. Maybe you use this tool to clean, maybe you use it for prying apart some panels inside the car so that you can get behind it and clean things or maybe you need to assess damage further. Uh, also in this tool kit, uh, there's something here that's designed to like, those little rivets or what have you, they're plastic. Slide this underneath there, pry up on it and it pops it out, that way you can take something off. Uh, this, I do believe, is for door panels. A lot of door panels, you have to get behind uh, the edge. Uh, this is something that slides underneath, and then you've got those things that it's plastic. It snaps to the back side of the door panel itself and then presses in. You slide underneath where that is and just give it a little squeeze, and you lift out gently without tearing it up, and that makes it a whole lot easier to put back together. That, you don't want to tear anything up. This tool set, I think, was like 25 bucks or something on Amazon. And its whole purpose is all these little tools in there to be able to lift and pry things loose. Uh, here's like a little scraper thing, very similar to the uh, dental tool pick that I showed you earlier. Anyway, check this out uh, if you want one of these. They're on Amazon. You can search these under automotive trim removal tools and find a whole bunch of these. This is probably the most expensive set. I think it was uh, 25 or 28 bucks, something of that nature. You can buy just a couple of those little prying tools. I'd say that probably get you through 60 to 80% of most of anything you need to pry apart anyway. As long as you're being gentle, you're probably gonna be able to get it apart without much trouble. All right, towels, towels, and more towels. There's a bunch of different towels you can buy. Buy a bunch of them, try them out, see which ones you like, what you think is best for each purpose. Every towel, you, know, you can get them for as little as like 30 or 40 cents a piece, depending on buying in bulk and you know the quality of the towel. And all the way up to like this towel here, I think this was like a 20 or $30 towel. Yeah, it's kind of expensive. We'll get into why that in just a minute. Basic microfiber towels. You go somewhere like Sam's or Costco, you can find these on uh, Amazon, uh, Kirkland brand. I believe they make this, I believe they are the same people that are making the members mark towels you find at Sam's. What is it, 36? Yeah, there's 36 towels in this thing for like anywhere from about $15 to $30 a pack, depending on who's selling them, when and where you're getting them. 
all that good stuff. These towels are very disposable. I think I use each towel about an average of two times. For the most part, these towels get used to clean up junk in the interior of a car. I use them, throw them in a bucket of water with a little detergent in them. At the end of the day, when I'm done detailing, I take them in and wash them. I don't dry them on high heat because that'll destroy them really fast, but if you wash these towels pretty much immediately, you can get three uses out of them fairly easy, sometimes more. I don't like having a bunch of dingy towels. To me, that just looks nasty and I don't want to keep that and I don't want that associated with my business. So I like to make sure I have these towels fresh. You can probably save a, a little bit of money if you want to buy a whole pallet of them, depending on what your budget is. But there again, use these, wash them, use them a time or two more, you know, obviously wash them in between. When they start looking dingy, throw them things in the garbage. Or if you know somebody you want to give them away to, some people love just having ratty towels to clean stuff with. All right, for cleaning glass, I like to use waffle weave towels. I use a little bit of glass cleaner to get the towel wet. Scrub on the glass, the waffle weave actually makes a very good rough pattern for being scrubby on the glass, I guess. And I'll use these to scrub the glass, get them clean. I only use my waffle weave towels to clean glass because the only thing that ever touches these towels is glass cleaner and dirt and they get completely they get washed completely separate from other towels i wouldn't want anything to ever get on these towels that if i was wiping something down that had dressing on it of some sort and i got that greasiness on the towel and then i'm trying to clean a window that could be very counterproductive so I always wash these towels completely separate and i don't let anything else touch them if a towel like this were to make its way to the floor, I would probably just throw it away. It would be easier to just cut my losses and then to take a chance on whatever might have absorbed into the towel. After I'm done cleaning the window and get, it, get the dirt off, whatever it might be, I use this called a bar top towel. It's a towel that's a microfiber towel that's, uh, I found them at Walmart. I think there was like eight or 10 of them for like 10 or 12 bucks. So they're, they're pretty cheap, about a dollar a towel and they're very good at absorbing water. So anything that's moisture that's left over on the window whenever I'm cleaning the glass, I'm able to buff off that haze and you know, get the glass clean, quick, done. All right, I wanna do a little bit better of a microfiber towel. This has got a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, maybe it's silky, maybe it's more polyester or whatever. It's got a little uh, trim piece around the edge that way some people like the edgeless towels to me, I don't really find a lot of difference in them. Uh, I don't feel like this is gonna scratch paint or anything like that. So, and depending on your opinion, uh, I haven't found anything that would suggest that this little edge is gonna be rough on paint or what have you. But if, if you find that it does, don't use it. This is a towel that's got, I think this is a 24 by 24. It's got the low pile side and the high pile side. This is a very soft towel. It's great if you wanted to use a towel to dry off with. I use these towels when I'm using spray sealant, something that has silica in it. This, I use the hot pile side for after I've sprayed it on, I wipe it off. And this is really good for like kind of buffing the excess um, haze that might be left over off. And then on to the last towel, uh, I'm thinking this is a 12 by 24, uh, that's what it looks like. This is the Drive Me Crazy towel from CarPro. I'll put a link down there for this as well. This is a microfiber on both sides. It's very, very thick. I can't remember what the uh, grams per square inch that this thing weighs, but it's got a lot of weight to it. And this is a very good towel for drying if you want to dry. I dry a little bit different than a lot of people. I'll use compressed air to blow air out of cracks and everything and get the water dispersed as much as I can and blow it off the paint. And then I'll actually just take this towel and blot. I don't like to rub any more than I have to because Anytime you're rubbing, you're taking some sort of chance of instilling some more scratches or swirls or whatever. So I don't like to rub, but I'll, I'll lay this on a panel and then just kind of pat it dry just to absorb whatever moisture is there. There again, I, like I said, I don't like to rub on a car any more than I have to. So being able to just dry it, blot it, good to go. All right, I got a couple things left real quick. We're going to talk about lights fire extinguishers, and then stools and ladders. This is an LED light, it's an under hood work light, I think is what it's called. There's like 40 LEDs in there, I'll turn it on for you. It's cordless, so it charges, and if you need to, you can run it off the cord that charges it and then just keep it running full time, it's fine. 
not sure how, how bright that seems right now because I do have a lot of lights on here in the studio. Uh, push it again, you only get half the lights, maybe you don't need as much. Anyway, this thing is great. You can use this under the hood or maybe you're doing an engine bay detail. You stretch this out over the hood, uh, both sides extend. So you can pretty much put this on any hood. Unless you got like a tiny little hood that's not gonna work, think again. This thing snaps apart real gently. And maybe your hood is only so wide. We've got three of the earth magnets on either side very strong magnets, and maybe you have a fiberglass hood or carbon fiber or something like that, and it doesn't quite connect. Uh, these are little articulating hooks. They, they fully articulate any which way you want them. If you can't get this underneath the hood of your car, uh, you've got a weird car, I guess. Uh, there, there ought to be some measure that this will fit underneath the, the hood for your car. Most of the time, I am using this light to supplement my Lighting inside by, I'll have both back doors open. I reach through. This is really soft, but it's firm. Stretch it out over the uh, framework of the car. That way I've got a lot of light inside. And of course you can twist it pretty much any which way you want it to point the light in the direction you need it. Um, I may actually buy another one. I'd like to have two of these. That way I could have one in the back door and in the, the driver and passengers across the front at the same time, that would be nice. Uh, I might go ahead and do that. And this is something I found on Amazon as well. I'm thinking this was like either 39 or $49. Either way, fairly cheap and just absolutely and very worth it. I, I can't think of one of the, the more better tools that I have as far as something being really worth it and really handy. Also rechargeable light, uh, it's, it comes with these pretty big batteries in here. Can't remember the battery. It's not a standard battery as far as a, like a, a nine volt or D or C or anything like that. But anyway, it's got a uh, rechargeable cord, plugs in. I think this thing can charge up fully in uh, like four hours. The lighting portion pivots there. It holds pretty firm. Try not to blind the camera, but you got your big light and then you can turn it, hit it again. You got the, the four little lights and hit it again and then you got all five lights. This thing is a lot of light. It's, you know, for being able to spot some light right where you need it, being on a, a strap to your head so that you have uh, your hands free to be able to do other things. I'm um, thinking this was about 25 bucks. You can find some that have just the one big light if that's what you want. You can find some that have like three little lights. Uh, depending on what you like, just Search for LED headlamps on Amazon. You're gonna find a lot of things from $5 to like $60. And I think I found this one for like 24 bucks and I thought, we'll just give it a try. And it's been great. I've had this a couple of years and they just keep going. Own. All right, here's a light I got from uh, Home Depot. It says Husky on it, so you know it comes from Home Depot. I'm thinking this was about 125, probably the most expensive thing that we're gonna talk about today. This light, LED, I'm thinking it uh, produces like 2000 lumens. Um, if I'm saying that right, and if that information is accurate, I'm not 100% certain, but this light here, a telescoping tripod, it goes up about eight feet. And if you want to, you can flip this little switch down here and then this top portion comes off. Maybe you need it on the ground pointed up. Maybe you just need lower light. But anyway, probably one of the best investments also I've ever made as far as lighting. I use it all the time. It, it's really good for whenever I'm doing an engine bay. I've got that other light in there. Uh, maybe I find that that's in my way. I want to put this light on the ground right behind me. Lots of lots of light. Very very good good investment for 125 bucks. All right, something else everybody should have. I don't. If this is your first day, you should have a fire extinguisher. I'm going to say this again. If this is your first day, you should have a fire extinguisher. If you have no other form of insurance, this should be your number one insurance. Fires happen, not all the time, but it's not like there's gonna be any warning that says, hey, there's fixing to be a fire. Keep a fire extinguisher 10 or 15 feet away from wherever you're working, always. The $50, I think this was 49 bucks, I got it at Home Depot, for 50 bucks, and you don't have to get a big one. You can get two of those small ones for like $40. They come in a two pack or just at least have one of the small ones. 
fires destroy stuff. They could kill kill people from the does that yeah. Get a fire extinguisher. Spend fifty dollars at the most. Get you a fire extinguisher. I call this a rolly stool. It's got the little pneumatic thing down there. Um, your back, you only get one of those. Don't be bent over all the time killing yourself. Work in comfort. Get you a rolly stool. Get you a desk chair or something. I'm thinking these are like $30. Uh, Harper Freight. Rolly stool. Get you one. Make your work life a lot easier. And while you're making your work life a lot easier, a knee pad. There you can find them in Home Depot, um, Tractor Supply, Rule King, those type of stores. Anywhere you're going to have like a gardening section. Um, that's where I've always had good luck finding them. These thick foamy pads for knee pads so that you're down on the ground, uh, you're planting flowers, you got a knee down, you want to be comfortable. You want to be comfortable, get a knee pad. If you're working in a driveway, you're working in a garage, it's got a concrete floor, gravel, whatever, have a knee pad. If you're going to be down low doing stuff, your knees, knee replacement surgery, yeah, that's possible. Some sort of knee pad. They're a heck of a lot cheaper than new knees and a lot less painful. One of the last things I'm going to talk about is this little step stool. Um, I'm thinking this is about 18 inches off the ground. It's made of plastic. It's probably recycled plastic. Let's hope it is. 10 bucks. I got this at Home Depot. I've had this for so many years. It's over in the section where they have ladders. Um, I've used it to sit on. Not as comfortable as the little stool I just had up here, but as far as having something that's lightweight, uh, it's very good. Um, I keep one of these on pretty much each side of the car over on the corner. That way I have one readily available. Uh, very good for $10. All right, and the last thing I'm going to talk about here is this little aluminum step. I think it says it'll hold 300 pounds. Uh, maybe I'll get out of the way and you can see the whole thing. Anyway, this sets up off the ground about two feet. We've got approximately 12 inches wide and about 30 inches long. This is great for a seat if you need a seat. It's also great for being able to have something to stand on. I bought this because it was a little bit longer than the step that we just had up here. And with the little plastic step, I can step down off of it and kind of give it a little, little kick with my foot and slide it on, on down. But this I can set right about the middle of a car, depending on how long it is. And I can reach up and get the roof and I can take a step over this way and I can reach more towards the front and vice versa on the back. And I don't find myself moving this around a whole lot. It's, I put it in place, I use it, reach over to the area on a high vehicle that I can't normally get to. And this is one of the more expensive items besides the light. I said this would be most things under $60, $60 I believe. This is right at $60. I may get another one of these. I think it's well worth it, especially when you consider, you know, you got one on each side of the car all the time. You don't have to go chasing one around the car and that just kind of minimizes the the likelihood that you'll be carrying one around the car and take a chance on uh, bumping a car or something like that. But Anyway, I hope this was informative to you guys. I hope you got some good information. If you have any questions, put them down there in the comments for me. If you, also, if you got any other topics you'd like for me to discuss, anything that, that helps my business and might help yours, that's what I'm here for. Until next time, thanks for watching.